So, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Grace Nicole Myths, Astrology and Tarot. These are the Full Moon in Capricorn Goodbye Shadow Secret Code Name readings. For those of you who are unfamiliar with secret code names, uh, individuals purchase them via my Etsy shop, which is in the description below. All right, they go to my Etsy shop, they purchase them, and I say, hey, I got you. Your secret code name is... And in this case, it was Hall of Mirrors, all right? So this is secret code name Hall of Mirrors. This is their personal reading, all right? They know it's their reading. It's their secret code name. The beauty of these readings, though, is that you can be drawn to a secret code name in divine time whenever it's meant to cross you. And there is most likely a message in there for you. So Hall of Mirrors, thank you for participating in this event and allowing your own healing to ripple to others allowing them to heal as well thank you for being a part of this all right for today i am using my night sun tarot to reveal what the shadow is and then my shadowscapes tarot as to insight on how the universe spirit god whatever you want to call it is um helping you get rid of the shadow right say goodbye to it so here we go Spirit, please, for secret code name Hall of Mirrors and those who would be drawn to it, resonate to it in divine time. What is the shadow? What is the shadow? What they are saying goodbye to with this full moon in Capricorn. What is it? We have the Three of Swords, the Hanged Man, and the Knight of Pentacles. So double threes, because the Hanged Man is 12, breaks down to a three. Now the Three of Swords is about heartbreaking truths in this particular deck. The truth that breaks the heart. Um, but that ultimately reveals or results in justice. Okay, And the Hanged Man is about the mind being locked in a cage, um, literally, the mind being locked in a cage and feeling like you're surrounded by thorns and needing to see things from a different perspective that's not painful, right? Allowing what the mind thinks it sees to be put aside for a moment. So that things can be seen from a different perspective, especially an air of caution and pace, because the Knight of Coins, the Knight of Pentacles, tends to be a rather slow moving knight. Although, to be fair, in this deck, he don't look like he's moving all that slow. So, we'll get into that in just a moment. <clears throat> How is the Shadow Healing Spirit Keys? For secret code name Hall of Mirrors. All right, clarities, please. Give me one more. Is that flipped up? Did I just see that? Yep. All right. Bottom of the deck is the Ace of Wands. Top of the deck is the Six of Wands. All right, for Seven Wands. So, secret codename Hall of Mirrors. 
The Three of Swords, Hanged Man, and the Knight of Pentacles as a shadow. This is definitely feeling as though, if you look at this card, you see the two different figures wearing masks that cover the eyes. All right. And then there's the sword sticking through the heart, the bleeding heart in the center. All right. Each individual is holding a sword. That is the truth that they believe is the truth, even though they can't see what the actual truth is. And the actual truth is that both the hearts are breaking. Okay. I think that maybe your shadow might be very attached to your own truth, your own heartbreaking truth, and not necessarily see the heartbreaking truth that someone else is going through. And it's a matter of seeing the whole perspective, right? Being able to see how there, oh, sorry, how there really is no winner. When the hurt is what's rippling, there is no winner. And if you're hurt, then someone else is hurting because they wouldn't have hurt you if they weren't hurt themselves. Okay, and their hurt came from somewhere. And their hurt was trying to protect themselves, which is ultimately why they hurt you. Whether they were consciously aware of it or not. Right? The Knight of Pentacles. You may proceed with caution. Or a constant constantly looking around and potentially listening to a very stubborn voice sitting on your shoulder because there's there he has the heads of two bulls on his shoulders like shoulder like shoulder pads but they're bulls maybe a very stubborn voice that you listen to that refuses to shift it might really be that stubborn voice that says you know well it's it's how you feel that matters right and it's true it's how you feel that matters as as one perspective how you feel matters it's a a tool that we use to understand what's in alignment or not. Um, but how someone else feels also matters because they're rippling to you from their own mirror in your experience. You're experiencing them in your mirror for a reason, right? So their pain is not foreign from you or foreign to you. But it is not recognized by you as their pain. I think you're looking mostly at your own and not seeing how the pain of another um, also reflects from within yourself or they wouldn't be in your experience because the inner reflects in the outer. So whatever pain someone else is going through that is causing this hurting ripple is also a facet buried in yourself, right? That causes your own pain. It might have a lot to do with ego and pride and not wanting to be wrong because you may have been taught <laughs> from a very young age that everything you do is... Because it can, okay, it can go a couple ways. Either you were taught that everything you do is right and that no one should question you, right? And that you're always right. Or you are consistently told that you're wrong, that your way is wrong, that your thought process is wrong, and you've come back with a stubbornness that says, no, I'm right, right? And there's been a resistance that's consistently shown up in your life, right, from you, that you're constantly resisting and, and batting heads or, or butting heads with people, like, um, because they're telling you that maybe you're incorrect or there's a better way and you're insistent that there's not, that your way is correct. And so there's been this pattern of self-defense. Um,
take it how it resonates for you, right? Either people have always confirmed for you that you're right, you're right, you're right, and they always followed your lead. And so now you don't know what it's like to be led by someone else who might be right on something when you're not because you're used to being right. And so this is new for you, right? It's new for you to be taught because you're usually the one teaching. Um, it's new for you to be incorrect or need guidance or need a new perspective because you're usually the one guiding or giving a new perspective to other people. Or you've literally been taught that your way of being is so incorrect that you have resisted every step of the way and refuse to believe that you're incorrect. Okay. And there's a stubbornness that needs to be addressed because this is the shadow. It's the pain ripple and the lack of understanding on how your pain ripples to other people and back to you. Your pain ripples to other people, your pain hits other people, and then they defend themselves because you hurt them and don't understand how you hurt them. You don't understand how you hurt them. And then your pain that hit them, they, they reflect it right back to you and they hurt you. And you don't necessarily understand how your own pain caused it to begin with. How your own choices or your own behavior or your way of communicating or your way of intuiting things or your way of believing, right? Because the hanged man is Piscean energy. It's based on beliefs. Painful beliefs. That you might be proceeding with caution with people. You don't understand how your own fear of pain hurts another person and how that hurt that you that you projected onto them with your choices uh, ultimately ends up reflecting back at you right via their own pain body because your own self-defense puts them on self-defense and when they're on self-defense you get hurt so it's this ping pong that you experience that maybe you are not privy to seeing okay it might be very easy for you to point the finger at someone else and say, you know, well, they did this and they did that. Okay, but why though? Why? What pain were you choosing from that put them on high alert that this is a person who could hurt me because they're choosing these actions or they're talking to me in this way or they believe this and those beliefs or those behaviors or that way of communicating hurts me. And you put them on self-defense. And once they're on self-defense, it's their hurt and their fear, right? Because choices from fear is a pain, is a painful ripple. Um, their fear-based choices reflect back at you. And it's because you were making fear-based choices around them to begin with, right? There wasn't unconditional love and trust and giving and compassion and consideration and all of those beautiful elements there. There was fear from the gate and it was coming from you. And other people intuit this, they feel this, they pick up on this, and they respond unconsciously in accordance with your own energy. People only reflect to you the energy that they that, that you give them. People will always reflect that to you. Your own energy within. They can't reflect to you any other energy outside of yourself. Until they decide they don't want to deal with your pain anymore. You know what I mean? And or vice versa. You don't want to deal with their pain anymore. Whether you recognize the fact that your pain started it or not. Eventually people part ways when they choose no more pain. But that painful ripple still needs to be acknowledged. It still needs to be healed. That's why we go through repeating lessons over and over and over again. That's why Saturn's here. Saturn and Libra. Repeating lessons of pain being out of balance, right? Being out of balance. As we get into the shadowscapes tarot on, on what this healing looks like, the six of wands on top and the ace of wands on bottom is, is really having to claim the victory of your light, right? Being inspired by the light of your sun sign and going for the ten of cups going for the ten of cups and being emotionally mature and honest with your heartfelt truth 
This is the Queen of Swords and the King of Cups being emotionally mature in your heartfelt truth in order to receive the Ten of Cups, which is the ultimate fulfillment, right? Emotional fulfillment, feeling full, feeling satisfied with life and not feeling like there's always something missing. Because what, if you're always feeling like something's missing, if you're always feeling like something's not good enough, it's because you haven't healed something within yourself. You have a pain body in there that is rippling to everybody that you touch. And eventually everybody you touch is going to reflect that pain back at you. And then you're going to blame them and not see it and, and not take a look at yourself, right? And that has to stop. That cycle has to stop. You've got to be able to claim the victory and start fresh and new and reinvent yourself and be inspired by your light. Because the tower, the tower moment that's hitting is with the seven of wands. And it's you defending yourself against someone who is just being authentically them and reflecting back your own energy. You might be defending, right? You could be the badger against a group of people who are all in alignment and be coming off like the villain when you know you don't feel like the villain and everything is collapsing or you're like the fox defending things against a badger you feel is so different from you it's nothing like you and yet you're the badger you think you're the fox and you're with all of these like energies and you're all the same and you all feel the same and you all view the same and you all believe the same. And this badger is the one that's the problem. When really it's your own pain ripple that's causing the badger to be the problem. In the mirror of things, you're also the badger. You're also the problem. You're identifying yourself as one or the other. When you're both, and that's the tower. That's the tower. It's the failure to recognize that you are both. And when you fail to realize that you are both, the tower burns, right? The tower burns. And the whole tree, the family tree, the life tree is on fire fire it's it's been lit by the divine it's it's lightning struck and everything starts to fall apart and then you find yourself on your own with the ace of cups having to love yourself nourish yourself remember who you are that you're an overflowing person and going through that whole bit you know and you can't forget that you can't feel sorry for yourself when you're without the home, right? When the Five of Pentacles shows up because the home has been burnt to shit by the divine. It's because there is a truth here with the Ace of Swords that needs to be recognized and understood. That sort of truth is justice for the hurt that is not healed in the heart space. The five of pentacles is, a, is an abandonment wound. Feeling like you don't have a place. Feeling like you don't actually belong anywhere. It's because you're not, you haven't made a home within yourself yet. You haven't become comfortable or stable within yourself yet. Your home as a metaphor for the self is not stable. There's pain there. The Nine of Cups with the Page of Swords. It's interesting, the mirroring of the images on this card. These cards. One is above and one is below. One is with the swans and one is with the fish. The merman in the deep and the angel. Your wish fulfillment with the Nine of Cups, the wish you have deep down inside yourself that you want to create masculine energy, right? The merman. The wish you have deep down in the self that you want to create 
it comes with beginner's mind. It comes with a beginner's feminine heart space. Imagining who you'd be before the world and life tainted you. Secret code name Hall of Mirrors. You're seeing reflections of yourself everywhere and everyone and yet failing to recognize them as you. You're like, no, that's just a that's just a reflection in the Hall of Mirrors. That's not really me. I'm I'm me right here. I'm me right here. That's just a that's just an illusion. That's not me. It's just reflecting me. But that's not me, but it is. It is you. It is a reflection of you. You're seeing many reflections of you. The more people you have in your experience, the more reflections of you there are. There's facets of you in every single person that's in your life. Are they a shy person? Are they a loud person? Are they a nervous person? Are they an emotional person? Are they a smart person? Are they driven? Are they creative? Are they angry and volatile? Are they in pain? Who's in your mirror? They're all facets of you. And the problems they're facing that you're giving them guidance on, if you're giving them guidance, the problems they're facing, the issues that they're dealing with, however you would guide them, whether you do or don't, however you would guide them, like you need to take your own advice. You need to be strong. Right? You need to be strong. You need to let go of this person one day. You can't let this person control and dictate what you believe about life and yourself. You can't let this person get under your skin. You can't let this person distract you. You know, whatever advice you'd give, you got to take it yourself in regards to the same shit. Hall of Mirrors? Welcome to the circus. This is the shadow circus. You've got to tell your mind to shut the fuck up about the way you think you see things and really flip it. Really flip it. Put your mind in a cage and say, wait there a minute while I figure this shit out. Because the ripple has to, has to change right now. It's a painful ripple. It's a painful ripple and the pain has to stop. And if it stops, it starts with me because everything in my outer experience shifts when I shift my inner experience. This is about applying wisdom. Because wisdom means shit if you don't apply it. It don't mean shit. Confucius say, and it, what he say don't matter if it's, if it's not applied. Don't fucking matter. You can, you can have the best advice in the world, but if you don't fucking apply that advice to self, then your advice means fucking nothing. It means nothing. You gotta be able to lead by example. You gotta be able to lead by example. You can't lead with guidance. You can't lead with advice. You gotta take your own guidance. And you gotta take your own advice. You gotta lead by example. You gotta apply it. Show people how it's done. Watch me. I'm going to make it look easy because it is. You can do it too. This is how it's done. That's the truth. This journey is within the hermit card this journey is within this cup overfloweth has to come from within this ace of cups overfloweth has to come from within the self the abandonment wounds you've got to be able to see the truth in it and you've got to understand that if you want to receive the wish deep down within yourself that you've always fucking wanted that you have to be able to see the truth in receiving it from a beginner's heart a beginner's heart you are not different from the people that you vilify you are not different, not in wounding, not in wounding. They don't take advice just like you're not taking advice. They're not leading by example just like you're not leading by example. 
their rippling pain just like you're rippling pain. They're trying to be in control just like you're trying to be in control. They're trying to logically analyze and think about things and overthinking things and so are you. They're hurt, so are you. They're afraid, so are you. They're an obnoxious fucking asshole. Guess what? You're an obnoxious asshole to spirit. Like, spirit's like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Think about the perspective. Claim the victory and be inspired to really shine a new light. Let go of your shadow. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. I've linked it in the description. There is a video to a song called Crushing Snakes by Crowder. It's an excellent listen. It inspired the cover art um, for these readings. And I strongly recommend taking a listen and watching that video. For real. Leave me a comment if this resonated. Drop a like if you haven't already. Guys, thank you again, Hall of Mirrors, for being a part of this event um, and allowing your healing to help other people also heal. Right? Thank you very much. And I will see y'all next time. Take care.